We've got Fizzban's Treasury of Dragons, which I am very excited for, obviously, because I love I'm obsessed with dragons and and you know it is D&D, so good, good to focus up on the dragons. <laughs> it shouldn't be a shock, but there are a lot of player options in that. Uh, how did you come about with you know the, the the draconic flavored monk and the Drake Warden Ranger? Like, how did that come about, and what did you learn from player feedback? I kind of feel like everyone loved them from my side of the fence. <laughs> so they did. <laughs> and the art of the the, the Drake Warden Ranger is uh, will melt your heart. Is yes. pretty painful stuff. We we'll all went into that design. So we started off when it comes to the playable options in the Treasury of Dragons thinking we would do one or two subclasses and we would revisit Dragonborn. Well, that ended up growing, and I'll talk more about that in a bit. But really, we started with the subclasses and the Dragonborn variants. Now, when it came to the subclasses, we wanted with the monk to do something dragon-oriented, partly because we simply hadn't yet. And there are a, there are a lot of martial arts related stories in the real world that are connected to dragons. So we thought this was a natural aesthetic fit. Uh, it was also a way for us, as we've done several times, to revisit some of the elemental themes that we play with in the way of the four elements in the player's handbook, but in a way that's more satisfying because we know that that subclass uh, has generated uh, opinions. <laughs> uh, and, and, and so we like to experiment with new approaches. And that went into our thinking uh, with the Draconic Monk. When it came to the Ranger, we actually went back and forth initially on whether we were going to do a Druid subclass or a Ranger subclass. Mm. At the end of the day, we went with Ranger, obviously, largely for a story reason. Druids are primarily associated with animals, plants, and the Feywild. And we felt like uh, we would be sort of pushing a bit too far outside of their aesthetic boundaries. But even more importantly, if we suddenly had druids turning into dragons, mm -hmm. we were concerned about druids eating the sorcerer's lunch because mm -hmm. the draconic sorcerer really is the spellcaster who takes on draconic uh, physical characteristics. And we are often concerned about sort of turf, especially when it's highly connected to a particular class. And the draconic element in the sorcerer has been in the sorcerer's DNA going all the way back to third edition. Mm -hmm. And we didn't want to undermine that. But we also really love the idea of the ranger having a drake companion. And we also know that ranger players love having pets. Yeah. And that's possible, of course, for every ranger using the animal friendship spell. Uh, and we also have uh, you know, the beast companion option in the player's handbook, as well as the variant in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. But we didn't yet have an option where you could have your own little dragon. Right. And so we thought, okay, let's do it. And playtesters loved it. Uh, both subclasses had very high satisfaction scores. And the main thing we had to contend with when we were developing the final versions of the two subclasses is how can we make sure we continue giving all of the stuff that the playtesters want without making these two subclasses absurdly uh, powerful. Right? <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and, and so it was, it was a balancing act to make sure that they continued to be really, really tasty uh, without uh, suddenly overshadowing every other subclass in the game. Yeah, the, the ranger is a bit of a blaster. <laughs> yes. Yep. And, well, and we and we hadn't done that in quite this way with the ranger yet, so that was fun for us to explore, and also it was fun to build in using the companion as a mount, uh, because many of our heavily invested. Uh, Beastmaster Ranger players, they know that, like, if you're a small Ranger, and uh, it, you oh, know, yeah. if you if you if you make the right companion choice, you can have that companion yeah. be your mount. 
But this was the first time for us to build that directly in, where we tell you, we yeah. actually talk about it being a mount right in the subclass. And we leaned into that because that came through loud and clear in the playtest feedback. People wanted to ride their dragon. Uh, and so we... Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I, I did note that when I, because I've seen the book. And uh, yeah, I, I like that it explicitly states, yes. yes, you can write this as a mount yes. at some point. Yeah. That is a thing. Because yeah. uh, I can't even tell you how many times someone has asked me, can I ride my Iron Defender as an mm -hmm. artificer? <laughs> yeah. Like over and over and over again. So yeah. it will be something that comes up. Yeah. Yeah. They're both very fun uh, subclasses. So people love those subclasses so much. But then there was something else that came through the playtest feedback. And that was people like dragons so much that then it was a litany of, can you also give us uh, another sorcerer subclass? Can you give us a warlock subclass? Mm -hmm. Can you give us a wizard subclass? Can you give us a It just went on and on. Essentially, the message was, can we attach draconic goodness to everything? So we pondered, all right, do we do even more subclasses? In the end, we decided not to. Instead, we decided to do the feats that are in the book to make it so that every character class has the option of getting some draconic goodness if you take the chromatic, metallic, or gem feat. Right. We also made sure that there was a collection of new spells so that then also our spellcasters could get dragony goodness. And so that's why earlier when I talked about it, it just sort of started to grow because originally it was just going to be the, the Dragonborn variants and the two subclasses. But we saw, okay, people really want whatever their class they want to be able to get something dragon related. Mm -hmm. And that's why we ended up creating this, this whole buffet of draconic options for the book. And there's a lot of ways to flavor a character, like especially considering the bestiary that you have, which is very robust in fizz bands, is, uh, you know, there are a lot of existing subclasses that already could be dragon themed. Yes. Given the concept of one dragon uh, having multiple echoes on multiple worlds, some of those being the Shadowfell or the Feywild. You know, it, in the cases of like the Warlock, you know, you could, if you're a Warlock associated with the Shadowfell, well, that could be a Dracolich, right? Or if you're associated with the, the, the Feywild, then that can easily be, you know, the Archfey. Mm -hmm. You just you just are going for a different flavor and you can do that. I mean, if I was playing an artificer or ar artillerist, I would just be like, I'm fueling it with dragon fire. Kind of like Constantine with Keanu Reeves in the movie where he's got like the dragon wand. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so there's a lot of like fun ways to flavor it. What, why, why did you uh, include new Dragonborn options as well? And I'm very excited for them. I'm also excited for Dragonborn to be able to use their breath weapon as an attack. Uh. <laughs> so we for a while, uh, and by a while I mean for years, have been wanting to do some new versions of the Dragonborn. And the reason for that is A, the Dragonborn is super popular. Uh, and B, one of the messages that has come through very clear from the community over the years is people love the Dragonborn, but they want it to be even more draconic. Yeah. And also, as we worked on this book, one of the things we kept coming back to were the three great families of dragons, especially now that gem dragons are back in this book, and how chromatic, metallic, and gem dragons are such a big part of the D&D Multiverse's story. We thought it really makes sense for the playable race that is connected to dragons I mean, it's in the name, that they would have a bit more that connects them to those three great families. In addition to us allowing the person playing the Dragonborn to feel like a little dragon more often. Right. And so that's why we did things like letting you use your breath weapon more often. But you also could then also get some other abilities which make you feel like you truly are connected to whichever one of those three great draconic families that you're a part of.